So there's definitely one large overarching task <laughs> that needs to be done. On the note of DJ and I, quick warning, gonna get slightly political. Hello, everyone, especially my 43 subscribers. Today we are back with another 2020 update. Uh, the last one that I did was about a month and a half ago. Yay. So I want to talk about two, I'm gonna try and <laughs> stick to them, two important things that have happened or topics that I've sort of realized uh, over the last about month and a half. And the first one is that I'm really hard on myself with accomplishing tasks. So in the last month and a half, here's just a small comprehensive list of things that I have done. My sister is getting married. I have edited her music. I have to do one more edit, but I've gotten a majority of that done. I'm in the wedding, so I've gotten all of my groomsmen stuff taken care of. I've made arrangements for where I'm going to stay during my time in Colorado. I've made arrangements with work. I got a new laptop. I got a new couch. <laughs> I got my car back from Colorado. I made an appointment for my license. That way I can get a New Mexico driver's license and be registered to vote. Yay. I've made appointments for DJ to do the exact same thing. Um, I've made appointments for DJ's car and all the stuff that we still have to do regarding that. Um, we've actually gotten a good portion of that stuff taken care of. I replaced our vacuum cleaner. I've caught up on uh, all of our bills. Because I'm caught up, I was able to quit two of my, woo. I was able to quit two of my jobs, which feels awesome. So now I'm uh, just at one job instead of, you know, doing three, like one full-time, one part-time and a side hustle. I went to uh, my friend's baby, not baby shower, gender reveal. Went to my friend's gender reveal. I have uh, successfully put up one video during all of this. Yeah, so that's all a pretty sizable amount of stuff to do in approximately like 40 days, which feels awesome. Unfortunately, I have a much longer list of things that still need to get done. And I look at that list and unfortunately, because it looks so much longer, I always end up feeling like I did nothing. And because it's, some of it's just because I am not doing everything that I wanna be doing, but you know, I, that's okay. I am learning to look at my accomplishments and be able to feel just proud of the things that I've accomplished rather than looking at everything that I still haven't done and feeling like once I get that done, then I'll be happy. Yes, you need to just be happy with what you can do and enjoy the process as it goes. Realistically, I look at some of the stuff that I am not accomplishing yet on my list, and I, every single time that I sit down and write these lists, some of them are very, you know, very looming deadline-oriented things. Um, and I'll get into some of those, at least like one large chunk of that in a minute. But some of them are very, very small things, like every time that I write these lists, I will write down every single bit of housework that still needs to get done. And then I feel overwhelmed by how long these lists are when it's like the vacuuming, the dishes, the, you know, all of these things. They're things that I do anyway. Big deal. I don't know why I need to keep putting it on a list. So I also need to get a little bit of perspective with, uh, <laughs> with what I'm putting down when I'm thinking about things that I need to get done. Moving on into what some of that is. So there's definitely one large overarching task <laughs> that needs to be done that DJ and I have made a decision about. And DJ and I are moving. Uh, yes, we were very excited to have this apartment. You know, I'll put the link to that video up there in case you guys wanted to see what this was just when we moved in. But uh, yeah, it no longer serves our needs. And we found an apartment that we feel does. 
Um, it's a little bit bigger. Um, it's two bedrooms. We feel like we need that space a little bit. Unfortunately, moving is going to require us to pay double rent for a month and a half because of the way that the schedule worked out with move in and move out for here. So that's a little difficult. Um, it also just requires a bunch of like extra stuff. I keep just doing this like it means something. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it just it requires a bunch of extra pieces of like, well, we need to pay this ahead and we need to make sure that this and this gets transferred and set up, but we can't transfer this until this date and just a whole mess of stuff. And unfortunately, we are going to be moving around the holiday season again. So yeah, we hopefully are going to be moved in before Halloween, but our lease isn't technically up here until uh, November 30th. So that means we're going to have a vacant apartment for like a month, which is going to just feel weird. But yes, um, on the note of DJ and I. So uh, if you've been watching my 2020s, you know that DJ and I have had some rocky patches. Uh, and we've decided at this point that part of the move Part of the reason for moving is that we are going to try and just be roommates. We both very much love each other. We enjoy each other's company a lot, but there are just things that, from my perspective, DJ says that I'm a little dramatic with this, and if I am, then I am, but it's how I feel. Um, from my perspective, there are some things that we value that aren't the same. Um, there are things that like are moral issues. I don't, I, once again, I keep doing the hand thing. There's like values and morals that we don't share. And that's an issue for me. And it's caused uh, a lot of rifts in our relationship. And there's other like more psychology-based things that are going on uh, with both of us. I've not been shy to say like I have an eating disorder and I know that I have like other mental issues. I know that I have like attachment disorder which is very difficult to deal with in a relationship for both parties. I'm not going to say that it's like all me. It's all difficult for me. It's difficult for a partner to deal with. Um, and I just have my own stuff going on. And DJ has his stuff and I'm not gonna like share that on here. If he ever feels like he wants to get it out to the world or you know feel cathartic about it, then I will definitely let him make a 2020 and share because he's still gonna be an integral part of the channel. Um, obviously the video that just came out on Friday had him in it. It was a Todd and Copper. Todd and Copper is still gonna be a part of the channel. Um, it's going to actually probably be a more regular part of the channel now. <laughs> Uh, just because DJ and I are sitting down and we're making a bunch of ideas for videos that we want to make together on time that we have off together, which is kind of here and there. But uh, yeah, so nothing is going to change for the channel. Um, but that is just a little update between us is that we are going to try and just cohabitate as roommates and friends and see if being a support system for each other in that respect without any other types of expectations um, helps us both as individuals. Uh, it's not a malicious anything. Um, it's just we think that we can be more supportive to each other if we are being supportive as friends. All right, the second major topic that I wanted to tackle in this video uh, is that for this like past month and a half, I've been coming to terms with uh, temporary inconvenience for long-term results. And what I mean by that is that like, you know, I had three jobs briefly and that was enough to help me catch up on my bills. It's a very, it's, it's inconvenient having three jobs. It's inconvenient not having time. Um, it doesn't feel good to be putting all of your time into just making money. Like, I've never been a person that's about that. I never will be a person that's about that. 
but I do understand that at times it's a necessary evil. And that was a huge struggle with me because, you know, very personally, my family uh, has very, I've, I grew up with two completely polar opposite parents. Um, I had a dad who is very into his work. He owns a business, he owns several businesses. Uh, at work is his life. It always has been, and that's just who he is as a person. And then my mother has never worked a day in her life, never wants to work a day in her life. Yeah, so two completely opposite parents on that, especially because they were divorced. So I grew up seeing what it's like for someone that refuses to work and seeing what it's like for someone that is always at work and doesn't really make time for anything else. And so I was like, I want to be in the middle of that. I want to work enough to play and you know still feel secure and i feel like i do that you know i've mentioned on the channel before that there was a fairly substantial part of my life as an adult so far where i was only working two three days a week and i made enough for all of my bills i made enough to take care of my boyfriend i made enough to go on vacation yada 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 and i'm getting back to that actually pretty quickly um now that i've helped adjust my brain which that's another thing is that like some of the adjustments that I'm having to make, they're temporarily difficult. It's not nice to wake up and, you know, want, like it's hard to want to work out, but temporarily just pushing yourself to do it, it becomes a habit. So it's, you know, temporary inconvenience for a long-term result. And I also realize that that's sort of what our entire world is being asked to do right now and there's so much pushback on it that I don't understand. Quick warning, gonna get slightly political right now. And the reason that I did political in air quotes is that I'm talking about masks. Yeah, don't know why that's a political issue. Um, it's a short-term inconvenience for a very long-term result. A very long-term, very positive result, i.e. not getting sick and dying. And I know that there are people that, for whatever reason, think that COVID is fake, think that COVID is some government conspiracy. Psycho. Like, I try and be respectful of people's beliefs, but legitimately, we're in a health crisis right now. Like, this is affecting the entire world. Having someone put a mask over your face is not about control. Like if, it, okay. One, you wanna talk about control? I live in Albuquerque and our president was going to send troops until the military was like, we are not participating in this, but he was gonna send troops and instead send ICE agents into our city to uh, help with violent crime, which was abducting people off the streets in unmarked uh, vehicles where they were taken to a secure location for an undisclosed amount of time where no one could find them. That is control. Wearing a mask to keep people safe is not control, but I digress. There is such a pushback on this idea of very short-term inconvenience. And that's all it is, it's inconvenient. There's also a lot of people that are like, it's illegal for you to take my temperature and for to you to require me to wear a mask. No, it's not. Like, I don't care if you're pretending that you went to your lawyer or whatever, you being required to wear a mask to go inside a store is covered under the same law that says you have to wear shoes going into a store. Now, yes, you're totally right. As an American citizen, you can have every freedom to not wear shoes, but then you face the consequence of you won't be allowed inside a store. Like that just makes sense to a lot of people oh, that person's not wearing shoes, I don't want them inside my grocery store. Same thing, that person is not wearing a mask during a global pandemic, I don't want them in my grocery store. Real simple. But the point of this is uh, temporary, temporary inconvenience for long-term results. Why grown adults are pushing back on this idea so hard astounds me. And me having to realize, like, I need to do temporary inconvenience. And, like, 
this whole mask thing is part of what made me realize like this is a temporary inconvenience like why doesn't everyone just do this for a little bit and then we'll all be fine that made me realize like you know what i need to understand that i can have a little bit of inconvenience in my life i.e doing nothing but working you know not having time to you know talk to people not having time to record videos will make my life exponentially better in the long run because I'll be able to get out of the debt that I've fallen into. I'll be able to more freely have autonomy over my time. And the best part is that it's all temporary. It will go back to the way that I like it very, very soon. That being said, <laughs> the big takeaways from this video that I hope people get is, uh, you know, be easy on yourself when you're accomplishing goals. Be proud of whatever accomplishment you make. If you have 20 goals that you wanna do, don't feel discouraged at getting one done and seeing you have 19 still to do. Be proud of the one that you got done. And don't be afraid of short-term inconvenience. Short-term inconvenience can be a huge pivotal part of getting your long-term goals finished to getting things back to the way that you want them. I will leave it right there. Hopefully I have a couple more videos coming out. I'm trying to record things. DJ and I are trying to record things. Um, like I said, DJ is trying to help me on the channel because he understands that this is important to me and that I have felt bad not being able to be active on my channel for so long. So I have more in the works coming down the pike. All of my usual sayings. <laughs> If you made it this far, go ahead and leave a like. Comment below how some of your goals for 2020 have been coming along in spite of COVID, things that you're proud of, short-term inconveniences that you're having to deal with that you just wanna air grievances at. Subscribe if you're new to the channel, or if you're not new and just haven't subscribed yet, and I will see you guys next time. <laughs> Bye.